Restaurants unstoppable. What the most successful restaurateurs know that you don't. All right, Unstoppables, here we are. The first ever live demo within Restaurant Unstoppable Network. We have Greg Alpatov joining us, Director of Sales for Plate IQ. And Plate IQ has been recommended now on the show four times organically in the past 100 in 50 episodes, which is why you guys are here. Uh, I really do want Restaurant Unstoppable to be this organic tool of just paying attention to what successful people are saying and then following those those breadcrumbs, those, those trails to success. So uh, that's why you guys are here uh, because you've been recommended so many times and I just want to learn more and I, I can't wait to dive in. So Greg, I'm just going to pass it to you. Um, and just treat this like any other demo you've ever done. And hopefully um, if you guys have Anybody who's here joining us live, if you have questions as we go, uh, just go ahead and raise your hand and um, I'll, I'll bring you on. We'll unmute your mic and you can uh, ask your questions. Uh, are you ready to go, Greg? Yes, sir. All right. Fantastic. Let's do it. Yeah. That's a, what a fantastic intro. Thank you so much, Eric. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm really glad to be here. And I also just want to introduce uh, my colleague, uh, my friend, uh, Kyle Johnson, who's our VP of product. He's, he's going to assist me. Uh, in case any of your fine listeners ask anything super technical, he built okay. most of the platform himself and he's been with the company since the oh, very, cool. very, very inception. Nice. So, you know, you definitely get the best of both worlds on the product and also on kind of like how the process works as well. Um, all right. Well, fantastic. Well, I, I definitely appreciate it. I love your podcast. And yet yeah, a bunch of our customers have been on over, 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 over time and we've been, we've been referenced. So we're kind of, I guess we're blessed to be in a position where so many people are kind of organically talking about us. Right. Yeah. Um, just to kind of high level, if any of your listeners have never heard of us or have no idea what you're talking about, what plate IQ is, um, some people might, but I'll just kind of start from scratch and I'll give a, a kind of holistic overview. We are an accounts payable automation platform specifically designed for the restaurant industry. Right. Uh, we were the first to market with this product. And what we do specifically, right, we do many things now, but specifically the problem that we're solving and the problem we started with and how we grew organically is because we automate the invoice entry process for restaurants. So restaurants, hotels, bars, nightclubs, all around the United States have the same process that they have to go through. They get paper invoices, PDF invoices. They have to take these invoices, read each line, and they can have a million different SKUs, a million variations of the same item, to plum tomatoes, cherry tomatoes, et cetera, so on and so on. They have to take all these line items, manually read them, code them to a general ledger account or an inventory item, and then manually put that in like by hand, type that into an accounting or inventory software, right? Um, our company developed a system where through two pieces of technology, you could literally just take pictures of invoices, scan batches of invoices, or have vendors send them to you directly. We digitize them, convert them into text through a technology called optical character recognition. No different than like the human eye being able to read a piece of paper, right? Uh, a computer could basically read, a, read an invoice and convert what it's seeing into text. Similar to like the, the banking app and like how like when you take a picture of a check, it could get converted to text and automatically deposited into your account. Um, and then it's automatically coded, mapped, and then through an approval process that the customers, you know, the restaurant group, mom and pop operations, hotel, bars, restaurants, you know, they could just push it directly into their accounting system. Okay. Um, supplementary to that, we also enable uh, uh, operators to seamlessly pay all their bills right from Plate IQ, right through ACH transactions that we set up electronically on behalf of the operator to the vendor. Um, we cut checks on behalf of the operator, like literally like cut a check, put it in an envelope, stamp it, mail it out, and tie that all back into their accounting system. Um, or we have a virtual card program as well that enables operators to get up to 1% back on all of their transactions that they process through Plate IQ. Um, we also have a ton of data, as you can imagine, right? Like some of the biggest publications in the United States come to us constantly asking us for macroeconomic trends as to what's happening, right? For example, like when when the you know, Trump was going crazy about the, the, the Southern wall. It had a, had a spike on avocado prices, right? Cause like the whole scare of things shutting down. Um, the wall street journal came to us and asked us like, Hey, like, you know, what's going on with avocado prices across the United States. Right? So we also offer this as a, as, as a monetized product to our customer where they could actually look at their data holistically and compare trends across locations, across geographic areas and be able to make smarter decisions into their spend. Do your customers 
do your clients get access to all the data across all restaurants to kind of compare and contrast prices? So that's, that's an awesome, awesome question. And I love that you asked that. We are actually in the process of launching a tool that will enable operators to understand what vendors are charging other operators that they compete with in their area. Obviously all discrete information. For example, if you're paying X for, for tomatoes from Cisco, you could see what other operators in your area is paying for that same price on average. Are you below the market, above the market? Um, it's currently something that's, that's, that's heavy how do, in development. How do vendors feel about that? <laughs> well, me and Kyle actually have a joke going on that like, we feel like they're going to, they're going to blacklist us and they're going to start like, you know, using foil as invoices <laughs> that you can't scan. Oh right? man. <laughs> that's yeah. fine. All right. Keep going. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah, no, no, that's, that, that's, that's an excellent question. And we I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. But um, yeah, so I mean, the data, the data is really, really powerful. And it's just something that, um, you know, enables us to add more and more value to, to our, uh, to our operators, right? Again, we've been around for uh, since um, 2015, basically um, started just with a couple of early adopters, like um, Thomas Keller restaurant group, um, people in that, in that category. How did you get Thomas Keller so early on? Maybe we can save that for tomorrow when we interview you deep dive. But, yeah, no, that's a good <laughs> question. Um, it basically, you know, we, so we, we, we call them. This <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that, that's true for sure. We call them, but like we had, a, we solved a real problem and like, you know, the problem resonated with different operators and, and the, some people are early adopters. Some people are not, you know, and that they really, you know, groups like that really like tender greens you interviewed, right. They were like one of our first customers. Yeah. And I would see like, like a, like a restaurant tour, like Thomas Keller. I know a lot of what they do is, is just sourcing from small purveyors. So, I mean, I feel like if, if Thomas Keller can use it and he's sourcing from like a butter turner in Vermont, you know, like, and he can use it for that. Like how, I guess, I guess what I'm saying is it's, it's, it's a very, uh, what's the word, I guess, utility, you know, like you can yeah, use it's, it. It's versatile. Yeah. I mean, I think that that was really sort of the, the initial proving grounds was, you know, we were working with Thomas Keller, we were working with Nobu, you know, we were working with Union Square originally, um, you know, those four or five years ago. And like you mentioned, you know, these are all you know, fine dining restaurants that have a ton of vendors, yes. local sourcing, fish market, right? Um, <clears throat> and, you know, like you said, that's, that's really what kind of was the proof behind the pudding of being able to develop our technology and make sure that it was able to handle everything. Okay. And, you know, we're really happy to say now we have, you know, over 10,000 restaurants and we work with everything from, you know, fast food, QSR, um, a lot of fast casual, but of course still a lot of fine dining. So we were able to do it all. Um, but, but absolutely right. Those, those fine dining establishments are the ones that have the, the big volume and also a lot of complexity, yeah. you know, that's, because of the way they're doing local sourcing. That's a statement to me personally, if you're able to handle the, the inventory uh, or to, to be able to do the process, uh, what's the word? Um, talk, just what they're, what they're doing, how they're sourcing. If you can handle that, right. I feel like you'd be able to work across most platforms. Yeah, no, that, that's, that's, that's an excellent point. I mean, there's, you, you could only imagine that the, the complexity and, and the different variations of all the invoices that cross all the operators in the United States, right? People from like Nobu that get like little, you know, Japanese vendors that sell, sell them fish to like big grocers and, and, and big broadliners around the United States to Coca-Cola, utility providers, electricity bills, marketing expenses, everything, right? Yeah. And we're able to, uh, to like the one percentile just capture everything, right? Like everything on these invoices, right? And we have a pretty strong infrastructure internally that's able to process these invoices, verify them to make sure that the operators have to do as less work as possible. I love it. Um, all right, man, keep going. Yeah. So let's, I guess let's just dive right into the, to the demo. Uh, and, and, and if, if any of your listeners or you have any questions during the, you know, during this process, just feel free to stop me and, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll answer or please, Kyle. please go ahead. Yeah, for sure. So this is our dashboard. I mean, you'll notice right off the bat, it's, it's super user friendly, right? Uh, the colors even resemble like LinkedIn and Facebook. We wanted to make sure that the, the user interface is very simple and, and anyone from like a CFO to like a sous chef would be able to use this platform, right? With a minimum learning curve, really nothing to do on the platform, nothing to learn. Everything is straightforward, right? Um, with that being said, you could set up different users on Plate IQ, uh, different permissions, right? A CFO for of, of this particular restaurant group could have access to all of their stores 
Whereas maybe a, a, a sous chef or, or like a, an accountant or a restaurant manager would only have access to that one particular store. And we could kind of customize exactly what they're doing on our platform to make sure no one is kind of doing anything wrong that they shouldn't be doing. Right. So if you're like the, the director of this group and you don't want managers deleting invoices for obvious reasons or editing invoices, you could set all that up in our, in our system. But ultimately once the user's permissions are set up, how do you upload invoices, right? Bread and potato of our platform, three easy ways. Um, select the store. If it's a multiple group, if you're just one store mom and pop operator, which we have tons of, uh, you'd be directed automatically to this upload screen. First way of uploading invoices, just scan them in batches of invoices, a hundred at a time, a thousand at a time, whatever your hardware is going to allow you to handle. And we don't necessarily tell you to choose any sort of hardware, whatever you have works, right? Um, scan it, drag and drop it to this box here. Plate IQ gets right to work. It digitizes it through the OCR, um, maps it, codes it to the general ledger. If you're exporting to your accounting system and then through an approval process, you could just click one button. All that information gets synced in. If you're using any sort of inventory system, um, and there's tons of great systems on the market. We integrate with pretty much all of them. We actually capture the line out and the SKU, the pack size information and push that into your inventory system, updating all of your costs. I'm going to interrupt real quick. Are there inventory systems that you think uh, integrate best with your platform? Yeah, Kyle, do you want to take that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, we try to be pretty agnostic. We try to integrate with anyone uh, who, who's, who's happy to integrate. Um, we've worked particularly closely with Cogswell, which is a fairly new cloud-based inventory system, and they're tying directly into our API. Um, okay. so that can, you, can you say that one tight. more time for me? Yeah, it's called Cogswell. Like a cog um, in a wheel? Like, like, yeah, exactly. Like cost of goods sold. Like the Jeffersons. Got you. Yeah. Um, and they, um, <clears throat> that's a company that was started pretty, you know, pretty recently uh, by some folks who, who used to be with Compete and some other inventory systems. So. Okay. Um, it's a very new system. Um, we're integrating with, uh, kind of all, all the popular ones that you can imagine, I think, and, and as many as possible, quite frankly. Um, yeah. like I said, we, we want to work with everyone, uh, that our customers want to work with. So that's kind of our approach. So you, you mentioned that you can upload it to a specific store. So if I understand correctly, you will have one license for a hospitality group and then per location, how does it work for that? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you could, you have as many, as many users as uh, on the platform as you want. Right. And you could upload to any store that you want if you're a master user. However, if I'm the general manager of one store and I'm set up at, by the, by somebody who is an administrator of plate IQ to right. only be able to access or only be able to upload to that store. That's, that's the only one you'll have access. That, that to makes upload. sense. So the permission model makes complete sense. I'm more discussing about, Mm -hmm. Within one single, I guess, umbrella license, you can have. How does the, are you are you wondering how the pricing works? No, yes, in short, yes. Well, are you, are you guys planning on getting to that? Um, yeah. Okay. Do you, Bruno, do you mind um, if we hold? Yeah, I don't, mind, I don't mind waiting. The thing right, cool, cool. he mentioned was going to upload to a specific store. That's great because you can sustain multiple stores from the same UI instead of oh, yeah. like multiple logins. That's correct, and 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 so from a from a from a UI perspective and using the platform we actually have consultants and accounting firms that have all their clients and it's all in one dashboard yeah, that's and great. you're able to filter in and kind of multi-filter the dashboard. So you can either see the entire view, you can see an individual client or, or group um, or an individual restaurant. And so, and then the, uh, as you mentioned, the permission model allows that as well. Yeah. Makes sense. So cool. here to, to Kyle's point, this is a, a, a pretty big bookkeeper in the, in the Bay area and you know, they represent, you know, some of the finest Michelin yeah. star restaurants. I'm seeing some good names in that list. I, I recognize. Yeah. And they're all independently owned. They're not they're other than using the same bookkeeper. They're not, you know, part of the same group. So like we've set up a view for this particular person where they could access, you know, all of their stores. Um, and then if I'm like the general manager of Bar Kren, you know, I'm only going to access Bar Kren's locations. Does that answer your question, Bruno? It does because it does exactly one of the issues that we have right now. No, mm -hmm. oh, Bruno, where are you from? What, New what York group? City. We run a small hospitality group. We have five restaurants right now, opening another five next year. Fantastic. Fantastic. Have you heard of our platform before this podcast? 
yesterday, actually. So one of the the executive chef for ah oh, shoot, Gorilla Tacos, Steve Landonia. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Yes. Yeah. So Steve, Steve is coming. He's working with me on a project. He's coming to New York City next week. Bruno, you're supposed to say Eric told you about this, and it's because of Restaurant Unstoppable. I'm not just kidding. Well, no, 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 check, check this out. So. Eric, Steve it's your point where, where people are organically talking about us, man. Yeah. <laughs> Steve told me about it. Steve told me about it. And then I logged in to Restaurant the Stoppel Network and I see Play IQ demo. I was like, perfect. The kid is going to yeah. find out about it. The universe is trying to tell you something, man. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> no Fantastic. pressure. All right, let's get back to this demo. Yeah, and uh, I just want to say, welcome. Adam Johnson just joined us. Uh, what's up, dude? Um, all right, oh. let's get back at it. What's up? The Adam Johnson? Oh, you know Adam Johnson. Of course. Who doesn't know Adam Johnson? Come on, man. <laughs> oh, Greg, how you doing? Good, man. Good. Good to see your face. We're in good company. <laughs> good to see your picture here. Yes. So I'm in a hoodie, so I'm not. I'd rather <laughs> you guys see like the mug shot that I, I took. Anyway. Um, all right, cool. So uh, we talked about scanning. Next way to upload invoices is. Um, um, direct from vendors. So there's a couple of different options. We actually have something called electronic data interchange, EDI. Some of your listeners might be familiar with that. Um, we interface with like over 150 different broadliners around the United States. Everyone from that you could possibly imagine as a sophisticated operator from the Cisco's, the US food, uh, FinTech, uh, FinTech, uh, Newport Meats, like any, anybody imaginable on the market, right? Um, so yeah, so they could literally feed us information directly into our system. We also have something called Web EDI, where we could actually log into different portals for utility vendors, where they're like, you know, uh, anything you could access on the internet, we could literally just have a have like a bot pull that information from the portal. Um, the third way of uploading invoices is um, email addresses. As you, you guys are still following me here on the screen. Yes. Yeah. So, for example, for Katana Hollywood in LA. Uh, we create an email address for them and also every other restaurant that's associated with their group where they literally could uh, have the vendor just literally send uh, um, emails directly to uh, that email address. The thing is that it's owned by our domains. And um, uh, once, an email, once an email hits that domain, uh, our system automatically scrapes it, pulls the invoice out of there, uploads it to our system, digitizes it, maps it, codes it, and then gets it ready for you know, whatever you need to do, approval, export into your accounting inventory system, and also all of the data recognition that you might want to do, price comparisons and whatnot. All right. Actually, I said three ways, but I didn't realize there is also a fourth way. I miscounted this morning. The fourth way is uh, just a mobile app, right? You could literally just take pictures of invoices um, from, from our mobile app. The good thing about that is you'll need a login to get into the mobile app. And then once you're in it, you take a picture, it automatically gets uploaded. Again, back to Bruno's point, the same store, whatever you're associated to, digitized, map coded, you see the final product right before you, you know, upload and export it directly into your system. As you upload different invoices, I'm pretty confident that the the recognition doesn't always work perfectly, right? Whether somebody spilled coffee on top of the invoice, so on and so forth, you're allowed to modify it once it's updated. Yes? Of course. Yeah, of course. And we have an exception handling queue. So our kind of expectation is that you're, if, if the invoice is, is pretty readable, we're going to read it. Um, you should, you'll, of course, if you cut off, let's say you fold the page and the invoice number isn't even scanned, then of course, at that point, we're going to say, hey, this, this invoice doesn't have an invoice number, you need to add it. Um, so that's kind of the expectation that, that we hold. Um, but yeah, uh, makes sense. we're going to tr try to read it as much as possible. <clears throat> yeah, and it's also important to note, like, what like the operator doesn't see is like how detailed we are on the back end to make sure that all of this is captured correctly, right? It's not only OCR at work. We also have like a human enrichment program where we have, I think at this point, like because of our, our sheer revenue size, we have like three to three to 400 people at any given time verifying all of the invoices that are processed through our system. At any given day, we're processing anything from 50,000 to 100,000 invoices across all of our operators. Wow. So it's essential that we have that extra piece where after the OCR finishes, someone could literally go in, in our interface and in and, and, and the back end and just be like, okay, like the OCR read filet steak, seven ounce, right? Is that correct? Yes, it's correct. You know, done. And this all happens on the back end without the operator even knowing the last, all you, all you really need to know as, as an operator is that, you know, within 12 hours, you have all these invoices back uh, digitized perfectly. 
Um, of course, we're not right mind readers, as Kyle said, if, you know, if, if there is something that is unreadable and undetectable by a human being on our team, we'll basically just kick it back to you like, hey, this, you know, didn't work. You know, can you please take a look at it or re-upload the invoice? I don't want to jump ahead, but once this is uploaded, I can see the items. This looks great. How does this tie or link into a specific recipe or does it completely separate? So that's that's separate in recipe like again if you're using a recipe costing system like a, like a c to it or cogswell as kyle mentioned or crunch time or any of the great systems on the market we're actually just going to export the line item information with the pack size and the skew into that system and then from there um, all of that recipe information will be uploaded there we don't actually ourselves we don't handle recipe costing like we focus yeah, so play strictly, it, doesn't do that play we it, do it. not we focus on invoice processing pretty much exactly we do that strategically right like there's a lot of other systems and a lot of competitors that came up in recent years that want to focus on that because you know they want to be this all-in-one solution you know you have sophisticated operators understand that like there's a lot of shortcomings when you try to do too many things we yeah. want to be the best in class invoice processing system like that's it you know and then and then handle your payments on, on that side so front to end total purchasing right so for a recipe costing model, Coxwell is one of the ones that you guys recommend the most. Yes, is that what you're saying? We recommend, yes, yes. we recommend Coxwell. They're, they're, they're newer on the market. They understand kind of like the current climate. They're completely cloud-based, um, which great. is great. Yeah. yeah. I linked to Cogswell um, in the chat if you want to check it out, Bruno. Yep, I just saw it right now. The UI doesn't look great, but maybe good. Well, it's good. You're a coder, man. Come on, you have high standards. <laughs> keep going guys <laughs> yeah um yeah let's let's just kind of like just jump through a couple of invoices yeah. and just see like kind of you know like this is a good example bruno i think this is kind of like what you were talking about right like somebody i don't know what somebody did to this invoice there's pencil here you know it's clearly been sitting on a manager's desk for 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 a couple of days right um but at the end at the end of the day like plate iq was still able to kind of go in process everything, even that some of the stuff is whited out, uh, digitize it, map it, code it, they're basically for export into their uh, inventory and, and or AP system. I'm impressed, that's pretty good. Different variations of invoices. This is clearly uh, a pure PDF that came in. If I were to look at like uh, a Cisco invoice, this is uh, uh, electronic data interface, uh, interchange, sorry. Um, Basically, we interface directly with Cisco. Our two systems integrate. They, they, they parcel us electronic data, and we actually convert that and turn that into an invoice image for, for better record keeping for the operator. Yep. For the accounting systems that support it, we are, you know, sending it image attachments and image links as well, you know, wherever possible. So that, you know, the operator has that directly linked from, let's say, QuickBooks Online or Intact or whatever. Perfect. Or accounting system they're using. Um, I'm, glad, so I'm glad you mentioned right that. back to the image. I'm glad you mentioned that, Kyle. So let's say I have I have this invoice and it's being processed through Cisco. I get this and I synchronize this with my QuickBooks online. This is what I would see as an attachment as proof of the invoice. Yes, yes? exactly right. And how uh, how reliable is the sync from QuickBooks to Plate IQ? I, it's reliable, you know, of course, we're, we're going through uh, with QuickBooks Online, we're using their API. And, and so if there's any, any issue or error, then again, we, we kind of have this universal needs attention bucket that, that handles exception handling, right? So if something fails, or, you know, uh, for whatever reason, it's going to show up there, and we're going to tell you exactly what happened, you're going to have an opportunity to correct, you know, what, what might be going on, um, and then send it again. Um, so it's, it's really very robust in that way. Um, and of course, we're, as, as Greg mentioned, and we'll get into it later, we're integrating payments in there as well. So those are also going in, you know, exactly as you would expect to, as, as built or as, uh, you know, AP payments um, in QuickBooks Online. Yeah, so we, we, we have um, a few options for approvals. So, you know, you can either have no approvals. Some folks just want to upload their invoices and export them and move on. Um, you can have what we call basic approvals, which is every invoice requires at least one person to approve the invoice. And then from there, it can be exported out to the accounting system. Um, or we have um, approval policies. And, and this is really a pretty cool feature where um, we can actually create a rule for different approvals where you can say, well, if the invoice is for this restaurant, we want this person to approve it. But if it's over $1,000, we want 
you know, this other person to also approve it, right? And those rules can be extremely flexible. Um, you can have multiple rules apply to a single invoice. You can have them in a chain where you can say, I want, you know, the GM to approve every invoice, but then if the invoice is over a certain amount or if it's coded to a certain GL or if it's, you know, um, for a certain vendor, maybe you want it to go to a district manager um, or to the facilities manager. So this is something that's being leveraged by, you know, some of our larger groups um, also for their corporate office invoices, you know, marketing and so forth um, pretty heavily. And, and we've just have a ton of functionality here to um, ensure that the invoices are getting routed to the right person. But this is also part of a greater efficiency for the organization, right? The idea here is how do you get all your invoices, regardless of the source that you're getting them into one workflow and then have the communication happen in that workflow, right? So you're not emailing things around, you're not leaving things on people's desks, right? You're not forwarding stuff and having a loss in the process. At any point, you know who is you know, waiting for the approval on this invoice, and then you can override it if you're an administrator, or you can have auto escalation rules based on, you know, it's been sitting with this person for three days, it should be, a, you know, escalated to somebody else. And so that, and you can even actually report in our system on, you know, who has the most invoices waiting for approval, how long and so forth. And that allows you to really keep control of your process as you grow and make sure that it's continuously flowing, right? Um, so this is just something we've invested a lot in and, you know, we have some pretty big customers with like 400 locations and they're using this to, to basically make sure that, you know, their GMs are approving on time. And if not, it's getting escalated to the DM. And if not, it's getting escalated to the COO. And as you can imagine, if you're a GM, you don't want that invoice escalated to the COO. So you're pretty on top of it. Yep. And then uh, th that was really well put Kyle. So uh, well, what I will add to that is, is the, the approval set is set up to be completely customizable, right? Whether you're like a, a like a, a 400 location QSR franchise that uses plate IQ, or you're literally just, you know, a mom and pop passion project, right? You could set it, the system up to, to basically meet your, meet your exact needs, right? Whether the owner is local at the restaurant or, you know, in Japan on vacation, well, one day, you know, they'll, they'll go back. We'll, we'll, we'll go back on vacation one day, but not right now. But anyway, um, if you're anywhere in the country, you could just approve the invoice, escalate it. You could have a simple process of, of just, you know, invoice gets uploaded, then approved by the owner, exported into QuickBooks or whatever ERP they're using, or something more complex as kind of Kyle was describing based on the, the needs of the organization. What if I don't have an invoice? Um, do you want to, you mean, do you want to create an invoice from in Plate IQ? Yes. And that's where you do it here. Mm -hmm. Just you could create an invoice and we actually reverse engineer it and create an uh, image out of it. So you'd add all the line items. You could upload an image or not have an image. Yeah. You could. Yeah, there's always a guy, Juancito, who comes and sells me something for like $10 cash, right? But I still want to quantize that as part of a, an expense. Yeah, for sure. What you could also do is it seems like you'd want to just create your own invoice, right? Or if like there's some, you know, obviously we work in the restaurant industry, right? Like there could be like a fruit vendor that just like, writes it on a piece of paper, you know, yeah. uh, you could literally take out the mobile app and just take a picture of that. As long as the, the handwriting is uh, legible and it could be understood uh, by either the OCR or somebody in our, on our team, that's going to verify that yep. it'll get processed. We do have another, a couple of questions that rolled in, in the, the chat real quick. Oh, fantastic. Uh, do you support hippos and also do you work with the supplier Flanagan's? Uh, this person is based out of Ontario, Canada. I think hippos is a, is a point of sale, if I'm not mistaken. Um, we're not typically integrating with point of sale unless, unless there's an inventory component. So um, since we're not kind of doing the whole inventory um, sales, uh, you know, menu engineering part of the equation, um, we're typically inventory, or excuse me, exporting into inventory systems. And then that's where, you know, there's a connection with the point of sale. Um, so we're not currently doing any work with hippos. Um, I don't if, think we have, sorry, go ahead. If there's a POS system that has inventory, I guess you would connect to that. For example, I use toast. We, 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 we potentially could, I, I think it's, it, it really depends on, on whether that system has the capability to do it. Right. Are they able to bring in, um, do they have an API that we're able to connect with for that inventory component or do they have a way to bring in a CSV file? That's that thing. But yes, there are POSs that we are, um, we are integrating with on the inventory component side, if that makes sense. 
like yeah, menu link, for example. What was that menu link? Yeah. And that, and um, what about Toast POS? We just asked. Um, I don't recall off the top of my head if we have anyone using the po Toast um, inventory component today. Um, I'd have to get back to you on that. I want to say I saw Toast. Um, I want to say I saw Plate IQ listed underneath the. I'm, I'm pretty confident it's there. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's one of the reasons I mentioned. All the locations yeah. that I have run Toast. That's, this is why I'm asking. Yeah. But, Cool. Sorry if we keep on derailing your, your Yeah, I know. You can keep going. Thought. I have more questions, but I don't want to interrupt. Go ahead. No worries. No, for sure. And we do we do integrate uh we could pull information directly from Flanagan's for sure. Uh cool. that was the second part of that question. Yes, thank you for answering. Yeah, sure. And and if anyone has any direct questions, you'll connect me with whoever's asking these questions. Uh, I'm absolutely happy to yeah, just yeah. talk more directly with them. Um, the only thing that I've left mentioning on the screen here is that we become the digital filing cabinet or the digital repository for all of these clients, right? Yep. Instead of using digital filing cabinets, instead of using Dropbox or, or some other solution, everything will be stored on our system. And we use the best in class cloud computing. We use Amazon web servers to host all this information. Not yep. only that, is it there forever? Um, it's exported to you know the invent uh, the accounting system right as you mentioned with like in your in your case the quickbooks online the image itself but now because the general outline of our business is to convert these images into text for the purpose of coding and exporting everything is now searchable and filterable by anything on these invoices right you could filter different date ranges like hey maybe i just want to look at invoices over the last year right over the you know over covid for yep. example or I want to just look at three months. I want to look at only this particular vendor, like, you know, Cisco or something, right? I want to look at only invoices that have, you know, operating expenses, interest in them. I don't know, like anything you could possibly think of. Different yep. department, um, document type. Maybe I just want to look at uh, receipts or credit memos. Mm -hmm. You could do that right from here. You could even take it a step further. Again, we've converted all of this to text. If you theoretically wanted to go in and search for avocado, You can literally just search for the word avocado and then every single invoice that had that word in it will show up for you across all your vendors. Wow. Sweet. What is the SLO of this website? If for every reason Play IQ goes down, how long does it take for it to come back up? Oh, okay. So it was, yeah, SLA. Um, I mean, I think we have like a 99.9% .9 SLA. They, they, okay. I, I, that's fine. It hasn't happened enough for me to have a good answer for how long it takes to come back up. I don't know. <laughs> Greg, good thing you had minutes. Kyle come hang out, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for, for sure. I knew. Thank I knew. Yeah. These are good questions, though, and I'm happy you're here asking these questions, Bruno. Thank me you. Me too. Me too, for sure. Yeah, so that hasn't been, that hasn't really been an issue um, in terms of, like, uptime of, of the application. Um, as, as Greg mentioned, you know, we have pr pretty sophisticated infrastructure on Amazon Web Services. So, like, if anything happens, essentially, um, we we already have it running on multiple servers, right? And they can just automatically, you know, self heal, restart, and so forth. So, yeah. um, and and also to that, like if if Amazon Web Servers goes down, Bruno, we in the United States have a way bigger problems than Plate IQ, right? No, 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 I get it. I get it. I understand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, different availability zones. So I don't think you have a problem. It'll be fine. So, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw my moderator hat on real quick, and uh, just want to check in with you guys. We're at. Um, 11.25, almost 11.25, we, we, we have you until noon. How are we doing on time? I just wanna make sure we get everything in. Yeah, we're doing, we're doing great. I All have right, a couple cool, cool. really, really powerful features to show. Um, but yeah, we're, we're great. So next on the agenda, I wanted to quickly talk about statement reconciliations, right? Major, 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 major process for um, restaurants in the United States, right? Uh, and what do I mean by statements, just make sure we and all of your listeners are on the same page, right? At the end of the period, how restaurants pay in the United States and elsewhere, right, in, in, in Canada, um, if they have that terms with their vendors, their vendors are at, at the end of the term is just gonna send a statement, this is what you owe. These are the invoices that you received, here are the credit memos, um, please pay this statement. Most operators in the United States pay off of the statement. So what they have to do in order to do proper accounting and make sure everything's paid correctly, right? And I'm sure Bruno, you could relate. Adam, I know you could relate. They have to literally read each line on that statement and then pull up the physical invoice, whether it's a physical piece of paper or in their accounting system, cross-reference it to make sure nothing is missing and all of the totals are aligned before they pay it. Sound, sound familiar, anybody? Sure. Yeah. 
We've created a process where they could do that a lot, a lot simpler. We enable our OCR technology to basically you upload the statement, just scan it in, take a picture of it, or have the vendor send it directly, just like the statement, just like the invoice, I, I apologize. Plate IQ digitizes it, converts it into text line by line. The difference is between the statement and the invoice. It's scanning the statement and cross-referencing it back to the invoice that the statement is referring to. So on the, on the right, you see everything here in black. It's correct. It's in the system. It's not missing, right? right? And then in this case, invoice number 4553796 was received. And what the vendor says you owe at the end of the period matches up to what was actually listed on that invoice. I guess I don't have permission to sh actually show this invoice here, but anyway. Um, and then it, here's where it gets really interesting. If anything's missing on that statement or if any totals don't align, you could literally click email vendor. I will automatically pre-populate an email field for you. That's going to show, Hey, we're missing these invoices. Please email them to that location specific email address that I talked about earlier that automatically generates invoices. Right. And then the body of the email automatically for your convenience will include all of that discrepancy information. That's pretty cool. One of the really powerful things about this particular tool and then combined with the invoice process, especially for, you know, multi-unit operators, um, you know, we were talking about spilling coffee on invoices, right? And, and, and as you can imagine, the high volume restaurant environment, it's pretty chaotic when the vendors make deliveries, it's pretty easy to lose invoices, right? And so, when you have this tool, it's, it's sort of a meta check on the process and, and on your people to say, okay, at the end of the month, the, the vendor said that, you know, I got all these invoices for, for, my, for my five or 10 locations, right? And it could be on a single statement and that's fine. We're gonna cross check across all your locations. Um, and we can see, oh, these two are missing. And then you can either contact the vendor or even contact the GM for that location and say, hey, do you have this invoice somewhere? Did it get lost? Um, and that's just ensures again that this process continues to flow and you don't get, you know, shut off by your liquor vendor or whatever it may be. Right. Um, and so it's just a great way to keep this process flowing, keep it accurate, um, but also make it bulletproof. Right. And I think that's, that's one of the things that we're really doing well. I have a question about, as we kind of talked about credits, how do you guys handle um, things like, I feel like one of the, the biggest banes in the, of, of having paper invoices coming to the kitchens, they're getting marked up and scratched off. And, and sometimes depending on the vendor, they're putting like the, they're changing the, the actual uh, invoice amount on the invoice, or sometimes they're saying, we're going to issue you a credit. Um, and then I'll just go ahead and throw in keg deposits and stuff like that too. It's another super fun thing to deal with. Yeah, absolutely. Keg deposits are my personal favorite. Um, <laughs> We are actually, um, and, and Greg, I, I'm sure you, you may have an example of this, but we are actually, uh, you know, capturing those handwritten edits where possible. And then we do, do kind of indicate uh, with a little icon that there, that there are handwritten edits so that the, the folks can check it. Now, of course, that's within reason, right? Some people I've seen write, you know, they, it's like they write CR, or they write something that, you know, a smiley face and they expect something to happen. But you know, for most of the folks who are doing something logical, like crossing out the quantity and writing a new quantity, um, we're generally capturing that pretty well. Um, and then, uh, of course, you have the image and 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 can verify that. So we're providing a process where we say, look, we have captured it, and, and here it is. Um, do you have, like a, yeah. do you have like a best practices for for that kind yeah. of? Okay. Yeah, awesome. our best practice is to cross out the quantity completely and then write a new one and then ideally cross out the total and write a new total. Honestly, even if they don't do the new math on the total, it's okay, or just do the math properly on the total, it's okay. The, the idea behind changing the total is kind of to make sure that, um, you know, we, we of course do an internal check of whether the invoice adds up with the total, right? And so if you, ch if you change the total, it'll kind of guarantee that, uh, um, that we're, we're doing that math for you. Um, so that's what we recommend. Now, as far as marking up the invoices when you receive, I mean, obviously, like, you know, we've been doing this for a long time across, I don't know how, how many millions of invoices. So we've kind of dealt with it at this point. It's ideal to mark, like if you're checking in, you know, uh, items, which is very common, it's ideal to just do it with a highlighter. Um, again, it provides the same human process, but you, you're not kind of completely destroying the data while you're doing it. Um, or if you're going to do it with a pen or something, you know, don't, don't like mark all the way through an item, right? Try to just do it on the side um, is ideal. Um, again, as, as, as we work with more and more operators, 
um, as they start adding EDI to the mix, I think that ends up being another big question there, which is, well, how do I do my short pays with my EDI because now I'm getting electronically? Um, the answer there ends up being a little bit vendor by vendor. I think somebody like US Foods, for example, the driver will actually you know, take the returns down right there on their sort of iPad or, or tablet or whatever they have, and then they actually send you a revised invoice through EDI. Um, other folks will, of course, send you um, uh, a credit memo. So there's a few things to do there. We actually have a, a little tool that allows you to say, I wanna do a credit request. And what we do is we basically allow you to enter that on the dashboard. You just give us the invoice number and a note and basically we wait for that EDI invoice to come in. And we attach that as like a flag on the invoice. That way you can ensure, like you write a note like, oh, return, you know, only got three tomatoes or whatever. We're gonna add that as a flag to the invoice so that when you get it, you can make sure that the, the vendor either did the right adjustment or that you can, you know, add that short pay or whatever your process is, request a credit memo, right? Um, Beautiful. Great. That was great. That was great, Kyle. And as I was, uh, as Kyle was speaking, I actually wanted to pull up a couple of examples to help with that question. Um, first example is again, everything like Kyle said could be edited by hand. Uh, and uh, this particular example, um, it was uh, some sea urchin that came in and anybody who appreciates uni knows that, you know, it's a very delicate thing and you want to make sure that it's as fresh as possible. Um, before you serve it. So in this case, I don't know what happened here, but I, I, for whatever reason, they put a negative sign here and they put the word credit. Plate IQ actually recognized that as, as, a, as a $58 credit as opposed to whatever the invoice was processed. Wow. But yeah. Another example that I, I wanted to show, show you guys is right here. One second. Oh, you, yeah, and while we pull up that example, you asked about keg deposits. Um, so I just wanted to quickly talk about that. Um, we, are, uh, we are capturing keg deposits where we can as, as a line item. Um, some folks are, are inventorying their keg deposits. Some folks have kind of a, you know, a, a balance sheet account where they're tracking them. So, so we are trying to tr uh, track them there. We've also done some work where, we're, where we have the option of, you know, there's keg deposits and then there's CRV. Um, and there's sort of two sides of, uh, of, the, of uh, the same coin. And so CRV usually operators want to treat differently. So we've actually come up with a way to uh, optionally treat CRV as part of the price, but keg deposit as a separate line item. Um, in terms of being able to track the keg deposit, which is how most operators want to do it. Um, alternately, CRV can be a separate price if you, you know, plan to return your bottles or whatever. And then do you guys see my screen? I have to share a different version of my screen. It's, it should just show you like a handwritten the, invoice. The PCAM Plus? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. This is like something I, I saw it the other day, so I wanted to show you. This is the mobile app. Obviously, there's a lot going on here. There's oil stains, you know, lighting issues. It's on a marble table, but still we were able to just capture what needed to be captured on that invoice, handwritten in pencil. Any other questions? I want to pull up a quick video. I'm assuming I'm- I, I do have more questions. Let's sure, say- of course, go for it. I don't, so you have an entity, you have a um, brick and mortar, let's say restaurant A, right? Mm -hmm. However, let's say it has two divisions, two sections or two departments, whatever. Kitchen A, kitchen B, how would you separate those? So we have a few ways, and I, I assume like in QuickBooks, you may have different classes for those if you're using Quick, QuickBooks, right? Um, so depending on on how you're, you're set up on your side, we kind of model it that way, right? So we either set them up as separate locations in Plate IQ, and they can have their own individual invoice processes. But if they're sharing everything, then ultimately, normally what we would do is set up a single unit in Plate IQ. Um, and then have what we call departments. So we, we enable um, basically next to the general ledger where you can choose what account you want it to go to, you can actually choose a department as well, which could map to a QuickBooks class to, um, or, or I guess QuickBooks Online actually has a concept of locations as well, um, to an intact you know, department location, et cetera. Right? So the reason we're bringing it up is because as part of the several brick and mortars that we have, New York City is currently closed completely for indoor dining. So what we have is ghost kitchens happening from the brick and mortar locations. So there's yeah. so two different invoice uh, streams coming to the same location, which I would like to separate appropriately. Got it. Yep. Okay. Yeah, cool. absolutely. And so you could either, we would either set those up as separate uh, departments or separate locations or even both. Um, and, and just while I'm on that topic briefly, that's commonly used as well. Like if you, if you, let's say you get, corporate bills or you get bills across all your units, you might get a bill from, I don't know, Spotify or something, right? And you want to split it between your five different locations. Um, we have that capability as well. So if you want to allocate a bill across five classes in QuickBooks, 
you know, that's we can cool. help you do that. Um, and we can even help you do that automatically. Um, so that's, again, another common use case for, for folks who have multiple units. That's cool. I just kind of wanted to visualize what Kyle's talking about. So this is a Cisco invoice and, you know, we could just with a click of a button, you could literally have it split across all locations automatically or just a few oh, locations. This is, this is great. So this is one of the issues that we have right now. We, one of our franchise, one of our brands is called Don Pollo, and we have three different locations. But when buying the merchandise for the bags, for example, we want to split it across all of them because it's the same bags that everybody's using, same branding and everything. This is cool. Nice. There was yeah. a, a question that came in uh, earlier uh, from Nico, and maybe now's a good time to answer it. He's no longer with us, but maybe he'll watch the recording. I think he might have answered this, but he wants to know if it's possible to back up all the data uh, locally that is uploaded so you can export the data maybe on a hard drive or something like that? Um, so, you know, we can always provide options to customers to like export the images to an FTP automatically when they're, when they're exporting or to, um, you know, generally what we provide is, is when, if, if they decide to, you know, no longer be a customer, we just provide them a, a zip file of all their, of all their invoice images. Um, there's generally not a huge use case for just, continuously downloading all the invoices, you know, although we do, do have some customers who do that um, locally, but, but, you know, I think the answer is basically yes. Um, you know, the best way to do it is if they have like an FTP or we can set up an FTP server, put all the images there and they can download them from there. Um, of course you can download them from, from our platform as well, but it's, it's kind of a one by one um, exercise at that point. So that's why yeah, I, I think uh, Greg was mirroring, mirroring what you were talking about. Um, I don't know who has control of the mouse right now, but that's me here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so you can download, you know, you can certainly download the images. Um, but, but as, as I'm, as Greg was mentioning, you know, previously uh, the, the, we're already sort of like super mega backed up with respect to the cloud. Um, and so our general recommendation is like, you know, we'll, we'll definitely give you the images if you decide to end your contract. Um, so it's generally not necessary, but again, uh, we can provide that option. And one more, one more question came in from Jonathan. Uh, when integrating with a POS system like Toast, would it automatically update my cost in the system per item? For example, I paid $30 for tomatoes last week, but this week it's $34. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's generally the expectation for any inventory uh, integration um, is typically... I mean, typically the way these integrations work is we're sending that, in, you know, given inventory system, the actual invoice data. So it's like the invoice number, the item level price and so forth. Um, depending on the inventory system, they're going to tie that raw vendor item to, to um, you know, whether it's a menu item or, or kind of an inventory item and update the price as it comes in. Of course, you know, inventory systems have a lot of rules engines based on like, does it get updated based on the date? you know, is it, is it using LIFO or something like that? Um, but generally that would be the expectation. Yes. Cool. I think that we're caught up with questions. If you want to uh, play your video. I think we, we, do you want to dive into bill pay first, uh, Greg? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. That might be. So uh, the bill pay is a super powerful feature of ours and, 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 and it's, it's been adopted by most of our customers. It's not uh, an, like you don't have to have bill pay in order to use plate IQ, right? You could just use our AP platform, but most people obviously are like, all right, you know, why don't I take all of it to the next level, automate the whole process by introducing payments into, into the mix. And what payments is, what bill pay is, is just an automated way to pay all of your vendors directly from plate IQ. Um, you could, like I said earlier, you could make ACH transactions to vendors that accept, um, uh, electronic transactions and setting them up is just e as easy as a, as a clicking a button. Um, we could generate checks and send it directly to the vendor on your behalf, right? Um, sorry. Or we could also make ACH transactions directly, uh, directly, uh, sorry, uh, uh, virtual card transactions directly to the vendor where the operator actually gets 1% back. Uh, we didn't invent that program. It's, we're just one of the biggest vendors in the hospitality space that do that. Where uh, a virtual card is is similar to like um, best way to put it, it's not a credit card. It's more like a a, a one time secure sixteen digit uh, debit card gift card that gets sent via email directly to the vendor. The vendor processes it through a standard terminal, and then the operator gets up to one percent back on all of those transactions. Uh, op, uh, vendors actually prefer virtual cards a lot of times because it's more secure than getting a check. 
Um, they don't have to worry about checks bouncing. They don't have to worry about like a uh, um, uh, uh, difference in time, all of that, right? So we, we have a bunch of vendors that are already currently enrolled in this and we're enrolling more and more vendors every day. So that not only subsidizes some of the cost of plate IQ, but it also for some operators that get a lot of virtual card returns actually pays for itself over and over and over again and enables us to give a return back to the operator. But between those three methods, you could automate your entire, uh, your entire um, payments process. Um, In addition to, to, to automating it, you're also allowing everything to be electronically tracked as well as remote, right? So everything's in the cloud at this point. And so if, you, if, you're, in, you know, if you're on the beach in Mexico, you can pay your vendors, right? Um, and still have the same visibility. And I think that's, that's one of the great powers here. Um, and especially during, during the current times where a lot of folks are, are, are no longer going to the office or, or maybe have even gotten rid of their office. Um, you know, the, the prospect of trying to print checks, put them in a mailbox, go to, go to the uh, post office, um, this just eliminates that completely. Um, and then as Greg said, there's a lot of benefits in terms of doing electronic payments, um, whether uh, better security or cash back. Um, I do want to note as well for folks who are familiar with, you know, check payments and, and banking processes, we do also integrate with, with banks to do positive pay. And so positive pay is a service where you can enable that with your bank to prevent check fraud. So essentially what, what we do is we send a file securely to the bank to tell them exactly what checks um, you've approved and sent for what amounts to what vendors. And then essentially if you have that service enabled, the bank's only going to allow those checks to be cashed. Um, and so it's just a great service to prevent. Uh, if you are sending check payments, check fraud is a huge problem um, for small business in the United States. So um, we do offer that to prevent that as well. Beautiful. Yeah. And it's as simple as setting up the vendor with how they want to be paid, whether it's cutting checks, ACH or V card. And then you have a bunch of invoices that get fed directly from the AP module. You select all the invoices, you schedule this to be paid. We also have a really robust uh, uh, option for approvals on the bill pay system itself. So for example, Bruno, if you have other people in your organization's managers um, yep. that just want to basically like approve them from their perspective, and then it gets escalated to you or any, any other partner in your organization, you have the final say. And once you approve it, then all of those transactions, however, they're basically set up to be paid are processed at that point. That is exactly what we have right now. So we have a GM, we have the executive chef, and it goes up to the operational director who's approving all these big purchases. How does this synchronize with QuickBooks in terms of payments, debit card, checks that you are talking of automatically generated? Yes, they all go in and, and essentially um, they go in as pay, AP payments in QuickBooks. So they're going to show up very similarly in QuickBooks as if you did a check run from QuickBooks, but it's all integrated, right? And then we, of course, add the check number if it's a check or the you know, the ACH transaction number and so forth if it's, if it's an ACH. Um, so it, it should essentially hit your bank rack and everything else exactly how you would expect. Meaning if you paid five invoices with a check um, for a thousand dollars, that check's going to um, be in your QuickBooks ledger as, you know, check number 10,000, let's say for a thousand dollars offsetting those five invoices. Yep. Great questions. Sure. And then I actually just have a quick video that I want to show everybody here. Um, so we obviously don't only integrate with QuickBooks, but the reason that I want to show this on the podcast, we have videos for, you know, to, when we have integrations with over a hundred different accounting systems. Uh, but most, most restaurants in the United States do use QuickBooks. So I'm assuming a lot of the listeners would find value out of this. If anybody wants to contact me directly, we have uh, demonstrations for Intact, NetSuite, Compete, Restaurant 365, um, any of the Sage Suite product, Oracle, we pretty much integrate with anybody. But for today, we'll just show this video, just kind of give you a little more insight as to how we integrate with different accounting systems. All right. By the way, this is, these are the departments that we were discussing earlier. Yep. Yep. Oh, okay. Oh, I love it. This is nice. 
Yeah, and a quick note, um, you know, obviously you can select all the invoices and click export um, for, for systems that have, you know, either um, an API connection like, like NetSuite, uh, QuickBooks, uh, Intact. Um, we can also just set that up to automatically export, you know, uh, that's just an option uh, depending on how you want to run the process. I also want to mention, you know, we've been talking about QuickBooks Online. Uh, it's, it's, I think that's that's what Bruno uses, but of course, we also integrate with with QuickBooks Desktop, QuickBooks Enterprise, and those are those are very common in this space. So make a check through QuickBooks. Does it flow through Plate IQ as well? Is there the other way around, or is it single direction by on single directional? Uh, I believe we would mark it as paid in in Plate IQ, so it doesn't show in our bill pay. I have more questions about pricing, but I don't know if you guys. Yeah. So you're going to touch that next? I have to leave at noon sharp. That's yeah, that's my hard stop too. Bruno, is your phone on the, the ding in the background? Or is there someone else? Oh, is that me? Oh, I'm sorry, guys. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, we're, it's no big deal. I was just curious. It was taken off. Um, yeah, for right. sure. We'll, we'll, be, we'll, be, we'll be done before noon for sure. Just want to just highlight a couple of really powerful reporting features that we have on, directly on our platform, as I mentioned earlier. You know, we have a ton of data about you and about the market. So we, you know, try to provide that back in a really value added way. Um, the first tool I want to show you is just spend, it's something called spend analysis. Um, let's look at this group over the last year. And it's basically a, 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 a very visual pie chart categorization of all of your spending over time, right? Anyone from like a CFO down to an entry level cook could understand this platform. It's not complicated. You don't have to scroll through, you know, complicated Excel spreadsheets, visual broken down by color. Right. And what this basically shows you is how much money have you allocated to your purchases over time across all your different categories. The thing about plate IQ, don't be misled by our name. We'll process all of your invoices from, from food and beverage to utility, to marketing expenses, to um, anything you could possibly imagine to legal bills. Right. So when you go in here, you'll see everything that's possibly categorized. Right. Obviously you guys probably want to check out food. If you click into food, what this is going to show you is a subcategorization of that master category. All right, you could see meat, seafood, dry, gro dry goods, click into meat, drill a little bit deeper. And um, we're going to basically allow you to drill as deep as, as your invoices categor are categorized, right? And that's automatic, right? So you drill into meat. Hmm? You scroll down. Okay. So this is actually the line items that have contributed to this master category. Yep. And you can actually see the percentage change over time of how they're fluctuating across yep. all of your. Is there a way to change the graph type to something like an area chart? So you can see this same colors over a period of time. And is there a way to do that? Hmm. I've, there is I've not, uh, but if you, that. if you click into an item, you would see a line graph of the items price yep. over time. Correct. Um, I think yeah. what I'm trying to ask is, as, as an, over, over, an overview, right? You have different categories. And if you do like a stack graph of 100%, you can see sort of the pattern that specific category is taking. Yeah, no, I, I, I got it. Yeah. No, we don't offer that today. But okay. uh, yeah, it's a good concept. It's interesting. Yeah, it's nice. Bruno, we might need to pick your brain about some some more visual features that we could have. Yeah, I'm future. feeling pretty lucky to have you here asking these questions, Bruno. I wouldn't know the right any questions to ask, and you're you're doing a good job. Thank you. Bro, guys. Fantastic. Which leads me to the second tool that I wanted to kind of really briefly discuss. And there's a lot of tools that come on our platform, but for the for like in terms of like analyzing your data from contract pricing to vendor compliance, all uh, you know, uh, but for, for today's purposes, I just want to keep it simple and just, just uh, allow, um, right. So the next is hot list and it basically is it. Um, Let me try that as uh, that pepper shishito. Right. Um, it basically allows you to um, keep track of all of your line items over time across all of your locations. And like, as you're seeing here, this, you know, innovative dining group out in LA has a bunch of different restaurants across different territories. And you can actually see how that one, that one item has fluctuated across different periods of time across all of your locations. And if you're seeing deltas here, this is some ridiculous stuff. One location is clearly paying more than another location for the exact same item. It's really good. 
these graphs are always fun to look at for avocados and other <laughs> products yeah. that you know change seasonally and so forth. Yeah, this is really good. Can you throw avocados up there real quick? I'm just curious to see what that would look like. Mm, yeah, give me a second. I could. I usually use another uh, Mexican uh, chain as a. And how are we doing on time? You guys still good? We're looking like we're, we're going to be able to wrap up in nine minutes. Yeah, I just have one last thing to talk about. We should just probably talk about that now. And yeah, then, yeah, I don't I'm, need I'm to sure see the avocados. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of people are interested in pricing. So Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, last thing to mention is that uh, another tool that we recently launched, and we're really, t like, this is, we're really excited about it, is we can now handle all of your expenses uh, for, like, and petty cash. So for restaurants, there really before us has never been a hospitality-focused expense management platform, and we just recently launched it. And uh, we're really excited about it. So quickly play this video. And then I'm sure Bruno has a bunch of questions about pricing. <laughs> we could jump into that and we could wrap it up. Yep. So what this platform actually allows you to do is you can either get a Plate IQ physical card or you can start creating Plate IQ virtual cards. Um, and so what that is, is and you, you can just play the video. I'm going to kind of talk over it. Um, so, um, here we're creating a virtual card as an example, um, and you can predefine like who the cardholder is, um, what it's for, what amount. And so this is for, for purchases. Let's say you want to have your GM and you want to make a purchase online. Um, you can actually get that pre-approved, right? And then they can only use that amount or we can restrict what vendors it can be used at and so forth, which is great for, from a control perspective, not having cash, right? Um, we can also actually give them a physical card where they can have that at the store level and say, okay, but you still have control over exactly how much their limit is per month and other controls, as well as then you get all the transactions here, as we're showing, you can code them to your, to your QuickBooks general ledger. You can add receipts. Um, if it's, if it's coming in from an external system and we don't have it, um, and, and ultimately integrate that with QuickBooks or other accounting systems as well. Um, so that's the purpose is, is to really get, get out of, you know, a lot of restaurants use a process where they're doing petty cash and they're doing payouts, right. From the, from the point of sale system and they're, and they're handling cash that way. This is to really eliminate those processes. You know, when, when that GM needs to run to, to Costco or to Whole Foods or something, you know, they can actually just use a play IQ card. You actually get cash back on that as well. Um, but also you get that control um, and all those levels of, um, visibility into what they're doing with that card uh, make sure that they're really doing something that's an approved activity and and not have to deal with cash uh, at the restaurant beautiful so now the the hot topic pricing yes sir let me just pull this up fantastic all right so i i did want to mention that we we have a we a a special for for your listeners today uh but this is just what i'm showing you here is just a general outline of how pricing works do you guys see my my screen still yes it's all on invoice volume and more specifically tiers based on your invoice volume so um depending on how many invoices you're processing per month you and depending on the features that you liked in plate iq is pretty much how you would pay um so it all sort of comes down to how many invoices um if if the viewers want reporting, they would be in Pro Plus, Pro, or Standard, and uh, it all starts from 99 and it goes up from there. Anybody listening today that contacts us and uh, purchases Plate IQ by end of year uh, is eligible to receive three months free. Nice. With the I'll just mention because I think you know Bruno brought it up earlier. Um, there's no you know price per user, it's completely unlimited users. So you can have your, all your GMs, your assistant managers, your everyone at corporate, whoever's, whoever's necessary. Correct. And is the pricing per location? Correct. It is. It is per location. Yeah. Not, not per department. Correct. So not per, per department Per brick and mortar. Yes. Per brick and mortar. Ultimately. I mean, it, it's fairly customizable and we're really trying to, we're really trying to gauge how many invoices you're getting. So if there's some sort of unique, unique, situation where we need to consider it all it's ultimately going to come down to like hey you know greg kyle i get 300 invoices across x amount of locations you know what are we going to do there it's all going to follow kind of a similar unit economic price on a based on a per invoice basis yes yeah generally it ties to brick and mortar so 
a common pattern would be like, you know, one, one corporate office location and then the rest of your individual brick and mortar locations, right? Um, and then based on invoice volume, essentially. Um, awesome. Awesome stuff, guys. Um, thank you so much for taking the time to join us today to, to dive in deep. Uh, Bruno, great questions. Uh, everyone who joined us, thank you for joining us. Uh, any final thoughts or, or questions yes, before I wrap up? getting in contact with you guys. I don't have your email. <laughs> Fantastic. I, I, I was just about to ask the same about you. Um, so, it's, uh, um, Eric, can you share my contact information in the, in the chat? It's just Greg yeah. at Plate IQ. Yeah. And then Bruno, I got your email. Anybody else that wants to get in touch with us, you could either head to our website, you could reach out to me directly. I have a, a fantastic team of, of, of sales guys that would love to talk to you, um, help you and show you anything in the platform. We could di dive deeper. Obviously this demo was limited. There's, there's things in the platform that we, we didn't get a chance to show. Um, so if you guys have any specific questions and you need something else, just let us know. Uh, we're happy to take a deeper dive more one-on-one -on -one and uh, show you guys everything. That yeah. And I do plan on inviting both Kyle and Greg to the network. Um, I want to give Play IQ your own private group for people to, who are interested to come and learn and for other, for restaurant owners across the nation who are using Play IQ to come together and kind of share best practices. Um, so you guys will be getting an invitation from me to join the network and uh, feel free to connect within the network as well. Fantastic. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. My, my pleasure. And Greg, your email is listed right there, correct? Yes, sir. It is. All right. And Kyle, did you want me, are you, are you staying out of the, the, the email conversations or? He, he, he's in yeah. there. Oh, you're welcome to reach out to me anytime. All right. Beautiful. Kyle, Kyle's who I reach out to if I have questions. So you'll, you're in good hands. Beautiful. Awesome. Uh, well, thank you guys so much. And I just can't, you know, can't say thanks enough. And thanks to everyone who joined. And uh, this was super valuable. Awesome. Again, Eric, thank you so much for hosting us. It's a, it's a real pleasure. Big fans. And, and we're super excited to be a part of this. Yeah, man. You guys were great. Uh, we're just getting started. I have a feeling this relationship is going to grow. Awesome. Awesome. Right. Thanks, Cheers. Thank you. Thank you.